Hey what's up everyone, in this video you will see how to set up and use RxJS with the ASP.NET Web API server calls. You will learn how to use the reactive JS observables with the data which is returned by Web API. You will also learn how RxJS can be used to directly call the Web API using the fetch API. Along with that I will show you how to pipe RxJS operators with the RxJS observables. So RxJS is a library which uses observables to write synchronous and asynchronous code callbacks. You can learn more about RxJS by going to its URL or by following any tutorial available out there. For this video, I will stay limited to its usage with the ASP.NET Web API. Alright, so let's begin with the code example. But first, I would like to thank all of you for taking your time to watch this video. I hope that you will find it useful. And if you do, please don't forget to place a like on this video and also subscribe subscribe to the code first channel so this is a very basic asp.net core mvc web application and there is a user model with a bunch of different properties like first name last name age gender etc there is an api controller which is named as user controller the http get method is returning a list of users which are populated with random values you can generate these random values by going to the website which is jsongenerator.com. You can provide the properties for which you want random values and then you can generate individual objects in the form of JSON. Now it's time to set up the RxJS code library in our project. We can do that in one of two ways. We can either download the JavaScript file directly and then we can place it in our folder structure like over here in the www root folder and then in this js folder or we can simply copy the cdn link from cdnjs.com to do that first we need to decide which file we need to use i'm going to use this rxjs.umd.min.js we need to copy the entire script tag because by this we will also get the integrity attributes value so that we will be sure that the script has not been tampered with so just copy the script tag entirely go to your project and then go to the layout.cshtml file now inside this development environment section we need to paste the script tag which we copied like this over here we will get the values for the integrity and the cross origin attributes when that has been done we can now navigate to the index.cshtml file i have removed everything and there is only a single script tag so first we need to call the web api using javascript and i will be using the fetch api for that and then we need to create the rxjs observables to handle the response which has been returned by calling the web api to do that i am going to add a new event listener to the window for the dom content loaded event i will create a new function which is going to be called as get users and this is going to be an asynchronous function because we will be using the async and await keywords to get the asynchronous data and now we can call this get users function directly from this dom content loaded event to call the web api i will create another async function which is going to be called as get fetch observable inside this function first we need to fetch the response by calling await fetch and then providing the url of the web api next we can get the object from the json data by calling response.json and now we need to create a new rxjs observable by calling rxjs.observable.create we need to provide a function as an argument and this function is going to have an observer as an argument. We can use the observer.next to emit the data items. And when we are sure that no more items are to be returned, we can call observer.complete. So because we only have a single list of users, we can call this next a single time and then providing the JSON object as an argument. Now we also need to return this observable so that we can use it by calling this function get fetch observable. To use it, we can simply call it by using the await keyword because this is going to be an asynchronous operation. And then we need to subscribe to this observable by calling observable.subscribe. Now whenever this observer will emit any value, then the function which is provided as an argument over here will be called. So because the observer from this observable is going to emit a single value which is going to be a list of users, we can use the user's name over here. Next we will be using another rxjs api which is from. So we will be creating another observable from this list of users by calling rxjs.from. Now because this users array is also going to be an observable, we can subscribe to it and whenever each of the array items of the users will be emitted from this users array observable, then we can log that users object to the console like this over here. 
and now it's time to run this code and see if the users are being logged to the console or not so this is the browser's console and you can see that there are three objects over here which are the users which have been returned from the web api now there is another way to call the web api directly from rxjs and that is by using the from fetch api function which belongs to rxjs for that we will need to create another asynchronous function and inside this function we will be calling the from fetch api to do that we just need to call rxjs.fetch.fromfetch and then we need to provide the url of the api after that we need to use a pipe function and then we will use the switch map operator switch map is going to merge all of the results and then it will emit a single value from the output observable so we are going to call response.json which will return the json object which is returned from the server and then finally we need to return this observable which is created over here this function can be used in the similar way. All we need to do is to replace this function by this one, get rxjs from fetch users. Now let's just keep the code to create a new observable from the array of users. But this time I will show you how to use the rxjs operators. So the first operator that I will show you how to use is the map operator. The map observable applies a function to each value which is emitted by an observable. For this example, I will use the map operator to add a new full name property to each of the user object by using the first name and last name. For that first, we need to call the pipe function from this user array observable. And then we need to provide the rxjs.operators.map operator. Now over here, we are going to add a new full name property to each of the user items which are being emitted from the users array observable. Now this pipe is going to return another observable so we can subscribe to it like this over here when each of the user will be emitted then this function is going to be called and the new user which will be logged to the console is going to have this full name property now let's see how this is working so these are the objects and now you can see that there is the full name property added to each of the object which has been logged to the console like over here and this is how we can use the map operator Next, I will show you how to use the count operator. So the count operator is simple. It simply counts the number of items which are emitted by the observable. To use the count operator, we first need to call the pipe function from this users array observable and then we need to call the count operator function inside it. And then when we will subscribe to it eventually, then we will get the count. When running this code, then you can see that the count has been returned as three, which is the number of users. There is one last operator that I will show you how to use and that is the reduce operator. So reduce operator works like the JavaScript errors reduce. It applies an accumulator function to each item which is emitted and then it returns the final result. So to use the reduce operator for this users array observable, we just need to pipe it first and then we need to call rxjs.operators.reduce. Now this reduce function accepts two arguments. The first one is the accumulator value and then the second one is the item which is being emitted from the observable each time. Now what this function is doing is it is accumulating the user's age to this accumulator value. So what we will get eventually is the sum of all the ages of all the users and we also need to provide a seed value which is zero so this zero will act as the initial value and then we will keep on adding the user's age to this accumulator and then finally it will return a new observable and then we can subscribe to it when subscribing to it we can provide a function as an argument which will be called when the value is emitted and we know that we are going to get the final age or the sum of ages so let's just log that age value to the console so the result is 102 which is the sum of all the ages which is being returned so this is the sum of these three values 34 32 and 36 and this is what this reduce function is doing all right so that would be all that this video has to offer you guys on using rxjs with asp.net web api please do let me know what you think about it and if you have any questions then feel free to use the comments area also again if you think that you like this video then please place a like on it and also subscribe to the code first channel to get the news about the latest video updates i am nitej and i will see you in the next video till then have a great time